Anthony Fantano, also known as The Needle Drop, is arguably the most successful music critic in the world. He has built a fan base of 2.6 million subscribers on his main channel and 1.5 million on his second. Across both channels, he has over 1 billion views on YouTube. He has also interviewed artists like DJ Premier, Logic, Brock Hampton, Lil Nas X, and many more. On the flip side, many people hate Fantano for his controversial and critical reviews. He has even been dissed by artists like Vince Staples, Post Malone, and Eminem. But how did Anthony Fantano get to the point where talking about his opinion on an album can make such an impact to where even huge mainstream artists care so much about his rating? Well, today we'll be looking into the rise of Anthony Fantano, the internet's most hated critic. Anthony Fantano was born in Connecticut on October 28th, 1985, making him 36 years old at the time of recording this video. As Wikipedia states, he's Sicilian, which may sound familiar as his distant relatives are responsible for the fantastic screaming Sicilian pizzas. He used to want to be a cartoonist, but he says he wasn't the greatest artist. Another fun fact about Fantano is that his dad was a powerlifter and got him into the gym at a young age. He also seems to be fairly in shape. He went to college studying political science, broadcast communication, and journalism, all things that he would later use in his career. Anthony began the early stages of his career working as a music director for his college radio station, and then in 2007 he began working at the Connecticut Public Radio. He said they were playing the same things on the radio over and over again, so he made a demo of his own show. The producers liked it, and thus the needle drop was born. Of course they were repeating a lot of program on the weekends, and I was just like, hmm... This is interesting. So you guys need shows. What about a music show? I put together some demos for a music show and uh, gave them to the general manager and he liked them. He got to a point where his show was running on 12 different radio stations. He was also inspired by one of his friends who was doing write-ups on artists in the early 2000s, so he eventually got into doing written reviews as well. While he was doing all this, he was also working at a restaurant. Fantano was continuing his show and his written reviews until 2009 when he realized he wasn't really going anywhere with them. And he also realized that it was somewhat of a dying medium. He decided to try out video reviews on YouTube since he didn't really see anyone else doing it, and that was a decision that would change his life forever. He realized he could eventually take it somewhere when he hit 1,000 subscribers in 2010, and he also saw his review of the Flying Lotus album Cosmogramma showing up in featured videos next to Flying Lotus videos, which helped him realize he could really get some attention. When he started on YouTube, sketch comedy was pretty popular at the time, so he also included skits in his videos. Thus was born his alter ego, Cal Chuchesta. Because you're, you're vegan? doing this. Cal Chuchesta is a recurring character on the Needle Drop YouTube channel who even released a mixtape in 2015 which was later reviewed by Anthony on his channel. The mixtape was called The New Calassic and was a parody album of a bunch of rap songs and he even had a feature from Joe Filthy Frank. These skits in his videos and his added humor is really what helped to differentiate him from others doing the reviews at the time. To this day he still includes a good amount of jokes and humor to help entertain throughout his reviews. After he started making his review videos he realized he had to learn more about past music and began listening to tons of old albums to have a better understanding of each genre that he reviewed. This is how he got the moniker, the internet's busiest music nerd. Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd. Anthony himself says, I have to ingest music at such a high rate in such an efficient way that I can't afford to be sitting around and listening to the same album for weeks and weeks and weeks on end. He also describes his life as the internet's busiest music nerd as a mosh pit between work, online stuff, family, shooting videos, and listening to music. In the early 2010s, while he was still doing YouTube and working at the restaurant, he got an offer to work in an organization similar to Pitchfork, and the offer was that he would move to New York and do what he does for a different company with a $60,000 salary, but he turned it down because he was confident in what he could do, especially if he was getting offers like that, and he wanted to have full creative control over his content. By 2011, he was already pretty recognizable, and he even got recognized by Kendrick Lamar after trying to catch him live. He continued grinding on his channel, and by the end of 2011, 11, he had over 50,000 subscribers. Anthony says that there's never been one video that really blew him up, but instead it's been a steady incline throughout the years. He had an incident at his radio job in which he had a lack of full creative control, which made him want to go all in with YouTube, a platform where he had full control, but he continued working at the radio station until 2014. So why do people like Anthony's reviews so much for him to have such a steady growth over all this time? Well, when Anthony started his channel, written reviews were on their way out and video reviews were on their way in. With Anthony being a pioneer as a music critic on YouTube, he has a leg up. He has experience, he's straight to the point, and he has an entertaining personality. His video making formula is simple. He 
sits down, gives his in-depth thoughts on an album, and wraps up his reviews with a score on a scale from 0 to 10, accompanying each score with an adjective being either light, decent, or strong. These scores are bound to cause controversy, but we'll get into that later. His reviews are known especially for being very well detailed and very critical. Anthony continued uploading consistently and growing regularly, and by 2016, he had around 800,000 subscribers. He accredits his steady growth to his extremely consistent upload regimen. Around this time in 2016, he wanted to make more money so he could afford to hire an editor, so he started his second channel, That Is The Plan, which would be a decision that changed his career forever. In 2016, Anthony Fantano created his infamous That Is The Plan YouTube channel, basically as a meme channel. He had series such as meme review and other deep fried content. It was very much so internet edgy meme content that isn't necessarily my cup of tea, but a lot of internet folks and edgy people really enjoyed it. Welcome to, to the, the meme, meme review, review hosted by, you know it, the best, best teeth, teeth in, in the, the fucking game. game. On October 3rd, Anthony Fantano posted on his Facebook an email he received from someone by the name of Ezra Marcus saying, Hello, The Fader is publishing a story about That Is The Plan in some of your podcasts, and I wanted to reach out for comment about some of the more controversial material. In the XXX Tentacion is the Greatest Rapper video, you seem to make light of domestic violence. In the Sam Hyde Needle Drop podcast, you laugh along while he imagines murdering Lena Dunham. Some videos included memes with the N-word as back background images, others include violent images of black people. What are viewers meant to take away from watching these videos? How do they relate to your music reviews on the needle drop? Looking back, do you stand by them? He captions the Facebook post saying, hit piece incoming. He also says in the comments that he had to shut down the channel anyway because it was blacklisted and demonetized on YouTube, so he deleted it the same day. If the sole purpose of the channel was to make money and it wasn't doing that, it makes sense that he would delete it. Later that day, the fader posted the article bashing Anthony Fantano trying to make him look like an alt-right racist white supremacist overall bad person. They went after Fantano for participating in the slash mu section of 4chan since 4chan can be known for its alt-right activity, although he was simply just using the music forum. They called him out for various other things such as having a podcast with controversial people like Sam Hyde. Ironically enough, people who are newer fans of Fantano would be absolutely taken aback by these accusations. Fantano as of now is very outspoken about his political beliefs, so an article like this is pretty out of the box. The article was really hurting his career and even caused him to cancel a speaking tour. A few days later he came out with a 20 minute response video where he really picked apart the article and got most people back on his side. Even though he is left wing, he did acknowledge that a lot of the meme community has a lot of right wing edgy little nerds. And he didn't say that verbatim but everyone who exists on the internet knows that's true. Later Fader deleted the article with some speculating that Fantano took legal action. Just a little editor's note here, it was not speculation, Fantano actually confirmed that he did indeed take legal action. It's safe to say that the Fader article is not good, sorry that wasn't, that wasn't funny. After after releasing his video response, it seemed like he recovered most of the people that may have switched sides after the article, and his career got back to normal pretty quickly. But since this incident occurred, Anthony has really strayed away from all the dank memes and edgy content that he used to post, and he's also become much more outspoken about his political beliefs, especially on Twitter and in his videos. He learned the hard way that you just can't make jokes on the internet. So if not for the fader controversy, why does Anthony Fantano get so much hate? Why did I title this video the internet's most hated critic? Why does he have a diss track with over one million? million views. Well, from my experience in both real life and online, a lot of people seem to dislike Fantano for one of two reasons. The first and lesser reason is that some people even get their musical opinions from Fantano. Although this can be overblown and it's a pretty big meme in the community, some people really do get their opinions from reviews because they can't think for themselves. Some fans even make jokes like, I didn't know what to think about this album, so thanks for the review. But some people have even labeled those who have similar music taste to Fantano as Fantano Core. If you're big into weird and alternative music like Death Grips, you would fit into this Fantano core category. Although it's not as common as you may think because of all the memes, some people really just can't think for themselves. But the second and most obvious reason that Fantano gets so much hate is because he's a critic. No one likes critics. Kind of like the food critic from the movie Ratatouille, that's how some people feel about Fantano. He doesn't sugarcoat his opinion and he tells it like it is, which warrants a lot of hate from others. It especially doesn't help that at the end of each of his videos, he rates the album by a number scale. Anthony is pretty critical with this number scale, with a 6 or 7 being a good score from him, and he rarely ever gives out tens. The issue with the scale is that people think the number means how good the album objectively is, which has caused a lot of hate and controversy when an album like Lil Pumps gets a 7, well My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy gets a 6, and Swimming got a 3. But he says himself that this scale is an enjoyment scale, not necessarily how objectively good the album was. People get bitter over that, but simultaneously, like the people who are in my audience who are in the know, like they 
take that bitterness and they turn it into a meme. He even says on his channel bio and in the description of each video that it's his opinion. But people ignore that and as we know on the internet you're not allowed to have an opinion without people getting mad at you. Anthony says there's no negative response from anybody that's haunting me to this day. There are great positive reviews that I'm happy with but nothing I want to toot my own horn about. I'm glad I'm stirring feelings up in fans and artists alike. And honestly I don't take the negative criticism as a bad sign as long as there's balance. So he seems to be pretty unfazed by the negativity which is good as his job is to be a critic. Personally I enjoy Anthony's reviews and I like to hear what he has to say about an album. Of course I don't agree with all of his takes and even if we disagree it's interesting to hear someone dissect an album at such a technical level and to hear someone else's opinion about it. It's kind of like you're talking to one of your friends about an album which is what I think makes his videos so appealing. Anthony Fantano is easily the most recognizable and successful music critic on the internet. His unique reviews and entertaining personality have garnered him a large audience while his raw opinions and critical reviews have garnered him a lot of hate. At the end of the day, Anthony Fantano's consistency and hard work have allowed him to climb to the top of YouTube. I'll leave you with a quote from The Spin that perfectly sums up this video. Watch one of his videos and his head will stick in your brain. Pale, round, buzz cut, he resembles a default avatar in the create a player segment of a video game, his face framed by big blocky glasses. Thank you for watching, my name is Manny Balls and I'll see you guys next time.